Hi, and welcome back to Grassroots Crypto, where I like to teach people about crypto. And in this video, I'll be going over asymmetrically versus symmetrical deposits in liquidity pools, then simulating some impermanent loss by changing the price of room and demonstrating the impermanent loss protection that would be applied all within the BDC pool. So this will be a detailed example. This is a two part video. And in this video, I'll be going over the graphics to like an overview. And then in the next video, I'll be going over the details with the spreadsheet so you can understand how we've got all the numbers and how some things work. So I hope this video clears up a lot of confusion around, you know, if I add asymmetrically and what impairment loss protection I'll get by going through a detailed example. Right, let's get into it. And don't forget to like and subscribe to see more content like this. All right, so let's set up the example. Here we have an example um, BDC pool with a depth of $80 million. It has 4 million rune, 1,000 BDC, and then one BDC buys 4,000 rune. So that's what's known as the ratio within the pool. So let's just say I wanna go and add liquidity to this liquidity pool. I'm gonna add about two BDC worth, so 80,000. So I could have 4,000 rune and one BDC because 4,000 rune is worth one BDC, hence the ratio. Or I could have two BDC here. So either I could add it symmetrically or asymmetrically. So let's go ahead and do that now. So adding symmetrically, I'm gonna be adding my 4,000 rune and one BDC into the pool. And for the purposes of recording the impermanent loss protection, 4,000 rune and one BDC is recorded when it gets entered. And then this is the addition to the pool. Asymmetrically is where we're going to be adding 2 BDC by itself. Thorchain liquidity pools are always 50% root and 50% asset, and in this case, BDC. So one of these BDCs is going to get swapped. So one out of the two is going to get swapped for 4,000 root. So when you enter, you're not adding 2 BDC, you're going to be adding 4,000 root and 1 BDC. And for the purposes of impermanent loss protection and recording the addition, 4,000 rune and one BDC gets added, which is exactly the same as when it is done symmetrically. And then the addition to the pool is exactly the same, whether it's done symmetrically or asymmetrically. So in both cases, you're holding two assets and you're subject to the price movements of both assets. I do want to note here that the slip fee, which I haven't shown here, would be the same in both cases. So it doesn't matter whether I took my two BDC here and then did a swap like before I entered the pool, whether I kind of did that, um, and then enter the pool or whether or not I entered the pool with two BDC, does the swap or the slip fee here and here is gonna be the same. It doesn't matter what order you do it in, um, the slip fee would be the same. So have a look at the end state here. Obviously the depth of the pool is increased by 80,000. Our liquidity that we've added is being added to the pool here. Um, and our position is 80,000 or 0.1% of the pool. And this is really what Thorchain tracks is, is how much percentage ownership of the pool you have. Because when or if the ratio was to change, which we'll look at in a second, then your redemption value is based off the percentage of the pool. Thorchain calls this liquidity units, but um, a simple way to think about it is how much of the pool do you own? So in our case, we own 0.1% of the BDC pool. Just to note, whether we did it symmetrically or asymmetrically, we're holding both assets and we have the risk of impermanent loss. So let's go and get some impermanent loss by dropping the price of rune from $10 to $8 uh, instantly. It's not really realistic, it happened over time, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and do that. So when we go have a look at impermanent loss, I'm trying to target more or less the worst case scenario. So it wouldn't be as bad if, if the price was to increase, but in this case, we're gonna go have the price decrease and we're gonna further make it worse by having no fee income or anything like this. So let's have a look at um, if we're holding. If we're holding and the price had changed, so Rune is now worth $8, 8,000 times 4,000 would be less. Um, we would be, our position would be 72,000. So that's holding both assets. Obviously that, you know, that Rune wouldn't be um, 40,000 anymore. It'll be 32,000. My maths works out there. 
Um, and that's not the same as holding two BDC because remember, when we added to the liquidity pool, we added 4,000 rune and one BDC. We didn't add two BDC. So we couldn't say our position should be 80,000. If we're holding, it's gonna be 72,000. If we're a liquidity provider, we would have a redemption value of $71,111. So, you know, no fees in this situation or anything like that. And what's important to note is really, we have a 0.1% um, ownership of the pool. Therefore, we can redeem that amount of the pool. And what has essentially happened to the pool? Because if you notice, the pool ratio has changed. Before, one BDC would buy 4,000 rune, and now one BDC buys 5,000 rune. So what's happened is, at the start, when the prices were original, everything was great, everything was balanced. Then the price of Rune has essentially dropped by 20%, so the pool's become out of balance. So what's happened is ARBs have come along and taken Bitcoin out of the pool and then added Rune in the pool in order to bring the pool back into balance. And that's why the ratio of the assets has changed. That's why um, Bitcoin has left the pool and Rune's been added to the pool. We started with 4 million rune and 1,000 BDC, and now obviously we have more rune and less BDC. So that's why your um, what assets you would redeem would be different. And as you would notice here, our redemption value is $71,111 as a liquidity provider. So we've got a impermanent loss of about $888. So let's just pretend 100 days is going to go past. The price doesn't change. We don't get any fee income, thus a zero APY. You know, the whole crypto space is kind of frozen in time for 100 days. And now we're going to go withdraw. So we're going to be entitled to some permanent loss payout or some permanent loss protection. So let's go have a look at that. The permanent loss protection the calculation happens upon withdrawal and only applies to active pools. So because this pool's active, we're going to be entitled to it. The calculation looks at what liquidity was added and what liquidity is being withdrawn, then it's going to go ahead and find out the difference. So in this situation, 111 rune is going to be the difference. So 111 times by eight, which is the price of rune, gives us $888. When you add that to the position, that gives you your $72,000, which is comparable to holding. So that's how impermanent loss protection you can pay out is, is designed to, I guess, top up the difference between your position as a liquidity provider and holding. So that's why you get $888. But just to re-emphasize this, it's not the same as holding two BDC. So you couldn't say I should have got paid out to, you know, the difference to make up $80,000 because as a liquidity provider, you're adding 4,000 rune and one BDC, you're not adding two BDC, even if it's done asymmetrically. So we're going to go ahead and withdraw and we can either do that symmetrically or asymmetrically. So let's have a look at both processes now. When we start, our start position is going to be 4,444 rune as well as 0.88 BDC. When we work out the uh, calculation, obviously we're getting that 111 rune that's added to our position. So technically it's added to your liquidity units. And from here, life simple you get that specific amount. So 4,444 rune plus 111 rune gives you that amount plus that BDC. All right, hold up. This is not technically correct. Symmetrical withdrawals are always 50-50, e.g. symmetrical. So just let me explain this. This video is designed to give people a general understanding of symmetrical versus asymmetrical deposits and withdrawals, impermanent loss and impermanent loss protection using a simple example, but not be 100% correct on the numbers. I mean, they're close, they're just not 100%. As stated before, impermanent loss protection payout is actually added to your liquidity units as if you asymmetrically added them yourself, thus increasing your ownership of the pool. Then you would need to recalculate your position with the new liquidity units in order to understand the withdrawal numbers. So they wouldn't exactly be this. I don't want to confuse people with all these details and stuff like that. So let's just go with the round numbers here with the understanding that the examples made up, the numbers are heavily rounded. The actual numbers would be slightly different to what you see here. And we're looking to learn the concepts and not get into all these intricate details. You can read the code for that and I'll put links in the description below. So let's continue with our example with that understanding. Having a look asymmetrically, it's a bit more complex. 
So the star position is the same as well as the ILP rune payout. So when you withdraw asymmetrically, you always want to have just that one asset, or in this case, BDC. So the rune payout needs to get swapped into BDC. Then we add that to um, our original uh, position here of BDC. So that's why we get about that amount. So some round figures here. Then we need to swap the rune portion of our uh, position to BDC. So uh, 4,444 gives you approximately 0 0.88 Bitcoin. This is excluding the slip fees here as well. And when you add it all together, you're going to get about 1.8 BDC. So whilst asymmetrically we added to Bitcoin, when we go through the whole process, we're going to get 1.8 Bitcoin out. And again, because we were holding both assets, it's not the same as holding two Bitcoin. So that's it for the video. I hope you found that useful. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. And the next video will be going into more details and showing how we got to those numbers. So thanks for watching. I hope you got a lot out of it. And until next time, thanks. Bye.